Hello everyone, it's Audrey with Audrey's Variety Show, Louise and the Bible. And on this wonderful Tuesday that the Lord has blessed, let's study the Bible with our Books of Wisdom series, this time Proverbs 22. And some things to ponder are, um, what does it mean to be humble and, you know, How should we go about raising our children? And I know that's kind of a heavy topic because a lot of people have uh, a lot of opinions on how they should be, you know, dealing with their children. But ultimately, I think, you know, we can all agree that it should be in the right way and the ways of the Lord. But let's get into it. All right. Proverbs 22. Um, I just want to pray that the Lord use me as an instrument of teaching um, as we begin our Bible study and that he uh, interject at any time and that, that, that this may be a portal to ex- experience in his presence as we uh, as we read the New King James Version of Proverbs 22 and feel free to follow along in your Bible as I read the entirety and then go back and go through line upon line and see what we can learn from Proverbs. All right. Proverbs 22 verse 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of all of them. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. But the pass, but the simple pass on and are punished. But humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor in life. Thorns and the snare are always of the perverse. He who guards his soul will be far from them. Train a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich rules over the poor, and a borrower is a servant to the lender. He who sows inequity will reap sorrow, and the rod of his anger will fail. He who is generous and he who, he who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. Cast out the scoffer and contention will leave. Yes, strife and reproach will cease. He who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the faithless. A lazy man says, There is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of an immoral woman is in a deep pit. He who is abhorred by the Lord will fall there. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it from him, far from him. He who oppresses the poor will increase his riches, and he who gives to the rich will surely come to poverty. Incline your ear to hear the words of the wise, and apply your heart to my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if you keep them within you. And let them all be fixed upon his lips, so that you may trust in the Lord and have instructed to you today, even you. Have I not written you excellent things of counsel and of of good knowledge? That I may know you in the certainty of the words of truth, that you may answer the words of truth to those who send send to you. Do not rob the poor because he is poor, nor oppress the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and plunder the soul of those who plunder them. Make no friendship with an angry man and a furious man. Do not go, lest you learn of his ways and set a snare for your soul. Do not be one of those who shakes his hand at a pledge, the one who is surety of, of debts, oh, for debts, sorry, 
if you have nothing to which to pay? Why should he take away your bed from under you? Do not remove the ancient landmarks which your fathers have set. Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. All right. That was Proverbs 22 in its entirety. So now let's get into it with verses 1 through 4. And when I started reading this, uh, I immediately, immediately thought of humility. And sure enough, there it is in verse 4, humility. And uh, I think at this point, and as far into it in Proverbs as we are, uh, we're just hammering in the right mindset and character that we should have as people in general, and especially Christians. And in verse 2, regardless of your stature, um, God created us all, rich or poor. He created them, and, and, and he gave it to, to he, if you get, he was giving you a, a lot of, um, of resources and power to be rich. I pray that you are utilizing them in the way that God wants you to and not becoming um, evil or wicked with that power and resources which you have. I hope that you're being benevolent with it. In verse 3, it's wise to stay away from danger. Um, you know, like uh, sometimes you can see things coming and it's best to avoid it rather than run right through it, you know? Uh, stay away from danger. Verse 4, being gracious and humble are the greatest riches that we have uh, before God as we, rever as we have revere him and fear him because we already know that uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay, verse 9 through, I'm sorry, 5 through 9. Uh, verse 5, um, when it's talking about the thorns and the, and the snares, um, if you have been following along for our previous um, Bible studies of Proverbs, we've seen this uh, a lot, how the road uh, to, for the, the wicked and evil it leads to death. And then like... Uh, Think of a corrupt person, a person that's doing wrong. You can see that the consequence of their actions is going to lead to some type of ill-favored happenstance. There's going to be a consequence that is not going to be nice for them. Uh, instant gratification or not, a, a bill is going to come due for that behavior, and uh, it's not going to end well. And that's essentially what... Proverbs five is saying, and, and this should be kind of coming, kind of becoming, I pray, familiar to you, and, and, and you're quick to put, realize these things and what it's talking about. At this point, no worries if you have it. That's why we do studies. All right, verse six. Uh, it's often a famous line from the Bible where it talks about uh, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And some people paraphrase this and whatnot. And unfortunately, kind of manipulate this verse, but it's it's black and white here, people. You know, when you are raising your child, if it is without discipline, not put just punishment, but discipline, they will always follow along the right path and course. You know, everybody makes mistakes, but there's there's been something that has been built up in them to be successful later on in life under your tutelage, under your guidance. Um, as parents, you need to be attentive to your children um, to help this along, especially train them up in the ways of the Lord. And that can only lead to a blessed life. And then, let's see, uh, verse 7 is self-explanatory at this point. And, you know, with borrowing and lending and loans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, verse 8, wickedness is repaid with wickedness, you know. And verse 9, too, you know, be charitable to others. It's all stuff that we've covered before. Verses 10 through 15, uh, was talking about the scoffer and contention and all of that. 
the bottom line is this. Stay away from negative and toxic people and peace will will come back into your life. When we when we make, you know, poor judgments and we're around people that are constantly really just speaking death into your life. They're always criticizing. They never have a kind word. There's always something wrong with everything. These people uh, are not good for you to be around. They're not speaking life into you. They're not adding anything to your life. There's no value being added by that. And verse 11, uh, this particular verse actually is, he really wanted me to focus on this. Uh, he really wanted me to uh, uh, look at this particular verse about being uh, he who loves purity and has grace on his lips. The king will be his friend. You can find favor when you are a pure hearted person and you are speaking the truth and you are being kind and gentle with your words and, and being wise with your words and stern and firm. And I would also add that, you know, purity a pure heart is when you are living for God and everything that you do and your mindset is mindful of God. You see Jesus talk about, about uh, having a pure heart in the New Testament. But uh, here, uh, what he really wanted me to say was uh, was simply that being pure of heart is, is to serve God and please God with all that you do. And when you are... Uh, speaking, you're sincere and you're loving in your words. You don't have a forked tongue, you know. You're straight as an arrow when you talk. And that's essentially what he wanted me to to really focus on in uh, at least uh, five verses here. And Because this other stuff um, we've covered before in previous ones. I kind of uh, we've covered in previous ones. Uh, and he really wanted me to focus on verse 11 and the purity of heart and what that means and, and what that should be bringing out of you. But anyways, moving on to verse 16. He oppresses the, the poor and increases his riches and he who gives to the rich will surely come to poverty. Great example of this is Robin Hood, of, of course, you know. Steal to from the rich, give to the poor. We shouldn't be stealing from anybody, but you get you get what I'm saying. And then verses 17 through 21. Um, there's really not a whole lot for me to say on this because this is just reinforcing what we already know about the benefits of having wisdom and listening to wisdom and hearing wisdom. It's only going to be a blessing to our lives. And then where are we at? Verses 22 through 25. God will fight for uh, the oppressed and and defend and defend the, and sorry defend them and what else? Uh, people who are how do I say this? Angry people. Uh, verses 24 through 25. Angry people and wrathful people are more prone to uh, spirits of, of vengeance and murder. You know, when a person is angry, they're more liable to be irrational and, and be a danger to themselves and other people. I mean, it's common sense, but I guess, you know, we have to kind of cover this, really. You know, people who are angry all the time uh, are prone to violence. And you being around that is not going to spell well for you, you know? They they have some spirits that that um, they need to be delivered from. They need to let go and get in and receive healing from the Lord. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. I'm like, I'm about to skip. Okay, verses 26 through 27. Uh, live with your... Uh, let's say this. Well, live within your means, okay? 
live within your means. You know, don't rob Peter to pay Paul. And and this can kind of keep you from, you know, um, as it says here in verse 27, like, if you don't have any money to pay what you owe, you know, to, to pay for things, uh, why should you be trying to, you know, essentially give your last, your, the, your last, and have nothing left. I mean, you're already in a in a in a space to where you you can't do much anyway. But that's that's essentially what that's talking about. So I kind of messed up on there on the verses part. Sorry, it'll be all right. I think that's why I got thrown off because I I forgot to to put the twenty seven instead of twenty five. Okay, in our last two verses, twenty eight and twenty nine, don't stay. Don't steal from from another person and their property. When it's talking about this ancient landmark and all that, you know, uh, in, in the Old Testament, uh, your forefathers' land and whatnot. Don't be stealing from another another person's stuff. That's such essentially what it's talking about there. And do your best in all that you do. So and it would uh, and it will get you noticed and uh, might curry favor. Uh, to your bosses, to those above you. That's essentially what that is about. And I wanted to put a movie that was, you know, about overcoming obstacles and trials. <sighs> I thought that that would be good. But to summarize, um, some things that we can take away from Proverbs 22 is, as always, humility is its own reward. And, uh, and you will be blessed by being remaining humble before the Lord. Uh, disciplining your children is a necessary thing for them to become the best that they can be and learn how to and learn how to navigate the world in the best way possible. And have a pure heart before God with all that you do, with all that you say. Uh, be mindful of the Lord. And and a lot of the times, you know, the best way for a person to, you know, I'm going to, I hope you can catch what I'm saying as I say this. I don't want to overgeneralize, but um, we need to show people the Lord through our actions and our words, not just tell them about about the Lord, about Jesus uh, as a Christian. They need to see it. They need to see the compassion. They need to see the love. They need to see the wisdom. They need to see the power of God not just telling them and yes our testimonies are important but we also need to be having the right behavior and becoming of those who are walking in 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 the faith and in christ truly i'll tell you an example like uh this was just the other day when i was at work um the lord wanted me to speak to this man uh he was actually one of the managers that i work with and he has been down. He was been very down for the past couple of days, uh, and I all I did was ask him, like, "Hey, are you feeling better now?" And um, he was he was quite appreciative of the fact that I just simply asked how he was doing. And he's like, "Oh, I got some personal things going on," but over the course of Thanksgiving, it just seemed like you know things fell into place and things are settled. And it was just something simple as that, you know, just. You know, showing concern and compassion for the people that are around you can help, you know, open up people's eyes. But that's all for this one. Be safe, be kind, be wise. Bye-bye.